we really have to protect our hair from everything because our hair dries out quicker, we get split ends quicker. So it's just important for us to just protect it so it don't break. Locks is a protection in itself. It's our heritage, all the way back to our ancestors with locks. That's just, you know, that's just how our culture grew. I don't know what the stereotype, like how it got started, but I do know like it is real. Like people really do have a stereotype against people with dreads. I've heard a lot of like my hair is just messy. It's unprofessional. It's unkept. Um, it's dirty. Well, you'll see how people will look at you, or people will clench on the stuff, or you know what I'm saying? Like when you walk by, lock a door, or any of that. I done been in stores before where, like, they be looking one way, and then they turn around to see me, and their whole demeanor changes just off of just taking one look. If you see a, a Caucasian, they have a, a, a bald head. You're not gonna, you're not gonna think they're a neo Nazi. So it's the same perception they give us with dread. As soon as they see you with dreadlocks, you automatically a thug, which is not true. You got the nicest people that have dreads, and anybody can be anybody can be bad. It don't matter what kind of hair you have. It's what they're about on the inside. It's what they're trying to achieve in life, and it ought not to be on a, you know strictly on your hair. Whether it's I don't want to say nappy. <laughs> But whether it's straight, whether it's curly, or whatever, dreadlocks, whatever, cornrows, however it is. You know, I mean, this is this is unacceptable. They shouldn't look at it as if we have to take them out of our head. I feel like they should look at it as if it's a part of our culture and they should respect it. And to just cut them off because you don't like the way they look, you know. I mean, I don't I don't know too much to say about that. But when we're getting to somebody's hair, uh, I think that is definitely an attack on different cultures, and that's something that we as West Virginians shouldn't stand for. Matthew Moore is 14 years old, a ninth grader at Woodrow Wilson High School. He played on the school's football team while also enrolled in the JROTC program. The entire time, Matthew wore his hair in dreadlocks. But things changed after Matthew made the basketball team. And was approached by the varsity coach. He said I couldn't play unless I, uh, I took out my dreads. Referencing a policy that states his hair must be kept neat, leaving his family extremely confused. So what was acceptable last week is not acceptable this week. Do I think my son's hair is neat? Absolutely. Faced with being benched, Matthew made a decision. How to do it, how to do play basketball. Your natural hair locks together, so the only way to take it out, which he took upon himself, was with a metal comb just ripping his hair out. He felt like he was backed into a corner and had to make a decision. A decision Josiah Hatch says he also faced playing for a baseball team out of state. The baseball coach told me to cut my hair and said if I didn't, then I wouldn't be able to play on the team. Josiah chose not to cut his hair. He relocated to West Virginia. He says what Matthew experienced at Woodrow Wilson is stemmed from someone's negative views of dreadlocks. And he feels many people across the country are making a conscious choice to not educate themselves about black hair. One man told me that uh, those ropes on my head were sucking all the brain power out. Yeah, this man, I had never met this man in my life told me that I needed to cut those ropes off my head. Legislation is being introduced across the country through the Crown Act, creating a respectful and open world for natural hair, a national effort to put an end to hair discrimination, which includes passing bills, making the actions illegal. The Crown Act has moved forward in California, New York, and New Jersey, and 24 states are considering or taking action to pass the Crown Act including the wild and wonderful West Virginia. The Crown Act was introduced by Delegate Danielle Walker to provide protections for students like Matthew. We needed to make sure that this young man was heard, that his parents was heard. Because down here, at this level, nothing's getting done. It's just like my words are going on, they're falling on deaf ears. Green is doubling down on needing this bill after a memorable meeting at Woodrow Wilson. She hoped the varsity coach would address why Matthew had to cut his hair. In attendance, the principal, athletic director, NAACP, our children, our future. You would think that the center of all of this controversy, which is the coach, would be at this meeting, and unfortunately he was not. Green discussed the need for diversity training for all Woodrow Wilson staff and the principal solution to right all wrongs, she says, further backs up her request. We've come to a conclusion that's going to make everybody happy. He, he, can, he can put his dreads back in.
he, he can do whatever he wants to his hair. And at this point, I just was like, you totally do not understand where we are coming from. Dreads are not a hairstyle that you can simply take out and put in, says cosmetologist Demethea Pearson. The people just don't understand the process. Like it takes a while for locks to grow. It's patience, it's virtue, it's, there's a beauty within over time in it. And to just cut them off because you don't like the way they look. Like, oh, okay. I shouldn't have even had to have asked you for permission. But okay, thank you so much. Now what are we gonna do about this so no mother has to be here again? Advocate Shakira Irvin was at Greenside during the meeting. What was said, I don't know if it was happening or not, was that they wanted to review, go back and review some of the rules and the contracts that they had all athletes sign and review it to see uh, if it left the type of uh, opportunity for uh, instances like this to happen again. Green says the school canceled a follow-up meeting and she's waiting for their call to reschedule a new date. She's continuing to ensure her voice is heard at the Capitol in the hopes that the Crown Act will get passed so no mother has to walk this cut your hair path again. Here for you, Jennifer Roberts, WVVA News. Andrea Brune retired from a communications job, coaching people on how to put their best foot and looks forward. Studies, as you know, show that people view straight hair as more professional. Normally, that's the advice I would give people. Unless your hair isn't naturally straight. No, if your hair is not straight, why should you have to go through all kinds of chemical processes just so you can fit some artificial ideal of what's acceptable. According to the Crown Research Study, what's accepted for many black women in the workplace isn't natural. 2,000 women were surveyed across the country, half black, half non-black. All work full-time jobs. 80% of the black women felt they have to change their hair from its natural state to fit in at the office. 83% felt judged more harshly on looks compared to other races. I shared this study with women in our community, and this is what they had to say. We don't tell people that their hair is too straight. They need to put some curls in it. So nobody has the right to tell us that we can't look the way we were born. This is my head. Uh, I'll do what I want to do to it. You do what you want to do to yours. It's my hair. It's me. You trying to tell me I can't be me? Who are you to tell me I can't be me? This is the way we were born, and we are curled naturally. Patricia Gomillion says a close friend was discriminated against because of her hair. Her hair was natural, and they told her that she would have to do something with her hair, perm it or do something, or she may not have the job. So she told them that she would have to write her resignation. Tiffany Cross shares her experience. I was in the office and the general manager told me that I was getting a little crazy with how my hair was. And I said, oh, my ponytail? Because it was exactly like it is right now. If you're born with thick hair, if you're born with curly hair, if you're born like me with straight hair that won't do anything but stick straight up, why can't we just embrace who we are as people? Showing hair love for all. Oh, yeah. Jennifer Roberts, WVDA News. Meet Zuri. She's in love with her natural hair. But she needs a bit of help styling it. For the first time, Zuri's daddy is combing through her hair. And it's a bit of work. In the end, it's all worth it. Because Zuri can visit her mother at the hospital. In the hairstyle her mother embraced and loves. Hair love is touching the hearts of families who relate to this hair journey. But its reach is bigger than you may think. And the Oscar goes to... Hair Love, Matthew A. Cherry and Karen Rupert Tolliver. That's right, Oscar winning. And the faces behind the animated short spread their spotlight from the trophy to the roots of the film. Hair Love was done because we wanted to see more representation in animation. We wanted to normalize black hair. Promoting hair love for young men and women of color. 
producer of the film, Karen Tolliver, tells WVVA how these images are shaping the way a child views the world. It's at four and, and five years old that you really start to shape your identity. And wanted to put positive images out there so the next wave of kids really get to, to see images of themselves. And, you know, I grew up in an era of assimilation and I didn't have cartoons that really looked like me. It was all about trying to look a different way. And I think that that really eats at your soul. And this issue hits national news and our backyard, with students being told to change their natural hairstyles, including Matthew Moore, a student at Woodrow Wilson High School. Matthew and his mother, Tarsha Green, say the basketball coach told Matthew to change his dreadlocks or be benched. I try to do it how I do play basketball. Your natural hair locks together, so the only way to take it out, which he took upon himself, was when a metal comb just ripping his hair out. He felt like he was backed into a corner. Tolliver hopes the West Virginia bill banning hair discrimination passes to protect students like Matthew. Until then, her message to all families going through this same struggle. You're not alone and stay strong and love yourself and have courage. It's a shame that we have to po uh, have a policy to police and protect our hair. But if that's the beginnings of protecting ourselves, then, then, then we have to do it. Here for you, I'm Jennifer Roberts. WVVA News.